What is going on guys? So we are back with part two of our regionals experience and today we're actually going to be going over rounds three, four, and five and I will put the closing ceremony stuff at the very end here and kind of, you know, round off some of the thoughts that I have from the actual tournament. So let's go ahead and jump straight into round three with K Steel Wall, which of course if you guys have kept up to date on any of my tournaments, um, he is usually the one guy that I have the most trouble with actually beating, but um, he did make an appearance at regionals and I'm happy that he was there. He was having quite the problems with his connection. Uh, his data was capped out and the Wi-Fi at the store was really, really spotty. Like we had to go outside in like 93, 94 degree weather. So it was kind of awkward, but uh, we made it work. We made it happen. So let's go over what we did. Um, we did have several issues to begin with. We had a, a, a laggy matchup in the beginning and then we had several connection issues where the game just like completely locked us out. We couldn't generate QR codes to send each other battle requests. Like after all that though, this is what happened. So in round one here, I lead off with Skarmory. He leads off with Gallade. I felt pretty strong about that. I didn't have like any qualms with the uh, the matchup there. He does switch out into his own Skarmory. And right here, I probably could have switched this around a little bit. I don't remember exactly what team I was running, um, but I feel like I probably should have switched out here. I did have enough energy farm to try to uh, break through some shields here. He did use one full shield and uh, I, I couldn't see there. It looked like I had a Zoomerill and um, Ivysaur there. Yeah, so I didn't really have anything to switch in for the Skarmory. Uh, he does end up keeping his Skarmory in here for a little while. I'm just trying to farm as much energy as I can. Right there at the end, I do try to put this play rough through to see if he really wants to hold on to that um, that Skarmory, he could use that shield. I decided not to shield the Leaf Blade. I honestly did not know how much damage it was gonna do. And right here, after the Azumarill dies, I switch back into the Skarmory, and I'm trying for the life of me to farm out, but his confusion is so heavy that I could not imagine actually winning that. So, boom, right there you see a Provo Pass comes out of nowhere, and this was kind of a MVP. Like, Provo Pass was extremely good. And I, I did actually contemplate running Provo Pass to begin with, but I... <laughs> I don't know, I just wasn't like sold on it quite yet. I hadn't had any practice with it since it just recently came out. I just wasn't like feeling it. I felt like I wanted to go with something that I knew a little bit better than trying to risk it and go with something that uh, was untested on my part. So looking at his team, I know that Ivysaur is gonna be a decent player considering he does have Whiskash and he has the Azumarill. So I was thinking like, ah, oh, like Ivysaur really should be the MVP for this, but I ended up switching it out for Metacham here and I switched the Azumarill for Lantern. I just really wasn't feeling the Ivysaur. Like after all of the like hype that I thought that it was gonna be, like I know that it's not a Venusaur, but like, hey, it's like the next best option for me. So I just, I don't know. I just wasn't impressed with it overall. I get the bad lead here. He does go with Probopass, trying to switch there. You can see I do bring out the Metacham and he's got the Thunderbolt trying to get any kind of damage I can. He's got the Skarmory. So I'm just literally trying to uh, farm up some energy, trying to get enough to uh, pressure some shields here. And I do get a couple of uh, punches off there with a shield that gets wasted. But unfortunately, since I'm in the bad side of this matchup, I'm gonna have to use both of my shields. And he uses both of his, which I felt pretty okay with, but there he goes with the sky attack and I'm contemplating like do I want to just bring out the lantern or do I want to try to use the skarmory either way he was going to be able to bring out that probo pass so I wasn't really feeling it there again I did switch out I did not think that his switch had fully come back yet but it definitely had that was a a, a miscount on my part I should have expected that and as you can see here this probo pass is just going to do a ton of work up against me it's going to be able to charge those freaking charge moves so fast and all I've got here is the lantern that rock slides doing a decent amount of damage he just charges so much faster I couldn't even get off that hydro pump before he got to another rock slide so possibly maybe if I could have farmed out a little bit better I could have had another charge move for the Gallade but it happened the way it happened. So 
that was a quick 2-0 up against K Steel Wall. And like I said, I mean, he's he's always an uphill battle for me, but it was great to see him. He actually did go pretty far in the uh, regionals itself. He didn't win, I know, but he did actually do a decent placing, which, which is nice. Into round four here, uh, I'm back in the AC, so that's pretty nice. Uh, we had to stand outside for that last matchup, which was... <sighs> hot but hey we're back inside now going up against Follick this go around and in this matchup this was one of those rounds that was extremely close like it was dead close at the very end so he had a pretty um pretty meta team all around he does lead off with the Mel metal first thing so I'm like oh my god so I do bring in the Steelix. I happen to have the Steelix for it, which I'm pretty proud of, but he can immediately switch and he goes Metacham, which was pretty rough. So I'm trying to get off this crunch here because I know the crunch will be pretty good. Just trying to get off any damage that I can. He does block it. Barely get off that second crunch before he puts me down. And it does decent damage. It doesn't do nearly as much as I'd hoped. But he takes that out. I go with the Skarmory here. Pretty easy choice. He does still actually keep getting off some charge moves here. And that power up punch, even though Skarmory shouldn't be taking super amounts of damage, it is doing pretty bad. So I do go for the Lantern here. He does switch into the Alolan Marowak, which I thought was weird. Um, possibly a misclick. I definitely feel like the... Um, the Melmetal should have been better there, but I'm basically just trying to uh, farm out some, some Hydro Pump energy there, finally get that off, and then he goes back into the Melmetal. Considering this is his last Pokemon, there's no reason for me not to actually try to fire this off. Go for the electric damage here, and it barely just does enough. So we win our first game there, not too shabby. So going into game two here, I do lead off with the Skarmory, and I'm kind of like worried at this point. I can tell he's using Hex, but I don't know if he's got the Fire Blast. So I immediately throw a shield, and he has Shadow Ball. So I'm like, okay, so he's got Shadow Ball. I wonder if he's got the, the actual Fire-type move here. So I'm worried, and he throws out Bone Club. So I'm like, okay. So that's pretty good. Also, another thing that I noticed is considering that he threw out Bone Club against the Skarmory, he possibly didn't know that Shadow Ball was going to be just a super, super good move. Um, so maybe he didn't know the matchup quite as well, uh, but he, in either way, didn't have the Fire-type move to combat us there. So whip out the actual Steelix here to try to get something going. He doesn't have any shields, but he throws out the Azumarill, which I'm not super proud of. <laughs> Um, going up against the Steelix here, it's kind of underwhelming. Throw out this Earthquake to try to do as much damage as it can. It does do quite a bit of damage, but I mean, as heavy hitting as Earthquake is, it still didn't do like nearly enough for me. So throw out the Metacham and his Azumarill is just going to walk all over me here. Going to be able to get off a couple of power up punches before I die, but not nearly enough as he's going to play rough here. And we're going to slowly go down with our Metacham. So that is a loss for us in game two. Now in round three, I do decide to lead with Skarmory. He does have the Alolan Marowak lead yet again. And I'm not too worried about it considering I know that he doesn't have the fire move to actually do super effective damage. Uh, he does know at this point that Shadow Ball is the way to go. He does start firing off that Shadow Ball. I really dislike how much it did. Um, considering the last match, I knew that it was going to hurt, but I didn't know how much damage it was actually going to do, considering I was already weak when he fired it. So I go into our Lantern here to try to do something. The Bone Club was like, oh, dang, like I shouldn't have done that, but I at least got it in. I at least made him use both shields there. The Bone Club still kind of doing a little bit of damage. It is super effective, but... It's not hitting for too hard, so I'm not too worried about it. Use my second shield there, get this Thunderbolt off to put that Alolan Marowak to rest, finally. And we go into this Azumarill matchup. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any shields, so we do get this Thunderbolt off, do a good amount of damage there. And we're gonna go for the Skarmory. Gonna be trying to get off that damage that we at least saved up in our energy there, and he has Metacham. So Metacham versus Metacham. He has the energy advantage. Holy cow, this was literally down to the wire. So I'm getting off this power punch. 
My plan was to try to get off one power punch, then two power punch, and then I was going to try to go for the ice beam, or the ice punch. And exactly his plan here, I get it, and I'm literally like tapping, but he has the priority there, and he does get off his ice punch. As you can see, literally a sliver of health, so a very, very close game, very, very good games from him. And in our last round of regionals here, this is round five. Going in, we are playing against Weird weird joes i don't know how to pronounce this name uh unfortunately i'm sorry if i butcher it if you ever watch this i'm very sorry but uh basically we're going into round five here with weird joes i'm hoping that's how it's pronounced he does have the flygon which i thought was really really cool he brings flygon in and i'm like oh that's such a cool pick so he's running skarmory flygon metacham azumarill um raichu and he's got the bastiodon so as you can see by now, uh, five rounds worth of this tournament and I saw two male medals. I definitely feel like the Bastidon would have probably worked out better for me than Steelix because I didn't actually see as many freaking male medals as I thought. Um, going into game one here, I lead off with Skarmory, he leads with Raichu. Ugh. That is a pretty bad leadoff for me, so I go in for the Steelix, and he's feeling pretty strong here. He's not too bad. He's got the Brick Break, which does chip away a fair bit of damage. He goes for the Metacham. I go for the Earthquake. I think that he was expecting the Crunch there, but I did end up going for the Earthquake and got a big chunk of his health out of the way. I do actually guard that first Power Up Punch just because I'm trying to not waste any of the energy on this Steelix here. He does go back into the Raichu, he does have the Brick Break powered up. So there down goes my faithful old Steelix. Going into the Metacham here, able to chip away a decent amount of damage. I definitely should have uh, freaking shielded that Wild Charge. I don't know what I was thinking, I was just like, oh, it's not going to do that much damage. So here he goes for Wild Charge again, I do waste my second shield on that, and he's got the Skarmory. So, Unfortunately, this is going to come down to a Skarmory versus Skarmory matchup, and yeah, he's got the energy, he's firing them off, I've got some energy trying to fire them off, literally down to the wire here, he's got Sky Attack, I'm really worried at this point that maybe he's going to have a Flash Cannon, but as you can see, down to a sliver of health, and he barely gets off the sky attack so he's literally left with like a couple of HP in game one so very very close matchup I did feel like my switches were kind of okay by the end of the day I mean I, I still made some bad choices here and there but I definitely feel like once I got warmed up to the idea of playing um, I, I definitely felt pretty good about switching I think that's just what I need to do like the the day of a tournament I just need to like play a little like I just literally need to just go in and just play a couple of matches of random stuff just to kind of get comfortable with it because I go into these tournaments cold like I literally wake up drive go tournament go so round two here or game two rather we're starting off with our lantern into the meta champ I'm not like sold on this matchup um, it's it's okay I mean neither of us are really like hurting each other desperately but um, letting him power up with his power up punch, pun intended, uh, is a pretty bad idea looking back. So he does switch out there to the Flygon and I switch into the Skarmory as we literally were trying to switch at the exact same time. Luckily, I happened to switch into Skarmory. I shouldn't have switched into Skarmory. There's probably a better switch out there, but we literally like switched at the exact same time. So it was just kind of a, oh crap, like how did we manage to do that? So he ends up using Flygon to a pretty good effect here. He's got the Dragon Claw and it was chipping away pretty good damage. He does have the the Skarmory for Skarmory matchup. I do have the Lantern still in the back there. He does switch out and I was like, oh my gosh, the switches, man, the switches. So end up getting that Metacham out of the way and the Skarmory versus Skarmory, but unfortunately, uh, Metacham is just not hitting on a whole lot for this Skarmory matchup. I try to bring it back. I have both shields. I'm trying to get off any power up punches. I think that was all the energy that he had. So at this point, I'm like, okay, we're just down to fast moves. Let's do this. Let's do this. And as you can see, he barely, barely got to there. So there again, a very, very close matchup. 
<sighs> I feel like that was like the theme of this freaking regionals was like, hey, <laughs> it's close, but you still lose. So that is actually all five rounds, guys. That was a an amazing regionals. I have to say thank you to everyone that was a part of setting this regionals up. It was in the like back storage area of an office depot that was air conditioned. There were plenty of tables. Uh, there were raffle prizes. There was a ton of stuff. They had trophies to give away. Like there was a ton of time spent on setting this up. And I really do have to say thank you to the people that actually set it up. So in Pogo Cabco is where the tournament was actually held. I have to say thank you to those participants, the staff, like everybody who was there. Like that was an amazing turnout like there was so much going on it was so lively like everybody seemed to be having a really really good time um, I do want to say personally from me like thank you to everybody who came up and said hey um, that was kind of surreal uh, considering that this is I mean a, a hobby yes but like it's really interesting that people like want to say hey and there was people that wanted to take pictures and that that's really cool like I've never experienced that so that was a very surreal moment thank you guys so much for uh, being fans of the channel whether I'm a horrible uh, participant in PvP I feel like I have the paper aspect of the uh, meta down I just I'm really bad at you know actually doing it <laughs> but thank you seriously to everybody who said hey um, they did have a live stream going they did pull me on stream that was extremely cool um, thank you guys for being such good hosts thanks everybody who came out and participated and I mean honestly I can't say thank you enough because it was so much fun it was such a good tournament uh, even though I didn't hit my personal goal uh, I'm sure there were a ton of people out there that did and congrats to Merker88 who ended up winning and I'll go ahead and just close this video out with the um, the announcement for his trophy and the the pictures and everything that um, the community actually wanted to take so thank you guys so much for watching and uh, enjoy all right so we do have a final victory without having to do any tiebreakers Do it now, second and third, so they can be sitting there with the trophy too. Alright, so Silk only dictated that we have to do a actual tiebreaker for first place, um, which is gonna be our champion today. Um, if anyone have any objections to us go ahead and using the Bolshevist tiebreaker. No, good, let's go ahead and do it. Alright, Tanner Banana, get up here for second place. Alright, and finally, we have Riley. Riley as well. We got your third place here. Yeah. Woo! There you go. Alright. So, we're going to quickly get a group photo. We're going to quickly do the drawings. And then we're going to quickly do something else. I forget all what. We're going to give out the extra prizes because we do have more prizes aside from just your trophies. All right, we're going to do that first. Let me go. Hey, is there Let me get in here. Wait, y'all need to y'all need to get in. Come on in, come on in. Let's slide this in. And everyone, please post your photos into the Silk GG uh, tournament channel in the Discord visitor server. My camera. I got it. We're all, I, I, I just went, what? Her phone don't work half the time. <laughs> all right. Are we good then? Yep. All right. All right. Let's go ahead. All right. Let me, the second and third place winners, can I get 